Good morning, and thank you for joining us this morning for online worship. Please join me for the call to worship. From the rising of the sun to its setting, my name is great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The proof of God's amazing love is this, that while we were sinners, Christ died for our sins. Because we have faith in Jesus Christ, we dare to approach the throne of grace with confidence, confessing our sins and expecting God's forgiveness. Let us confess our sins before our God. Will you pray with me? Holy and merciful God, in your presence we confess our sinfulness, our shortcomings, and our offenses against you. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways, in wasting your gifts, in forgetting your love. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we are ashamed and sorry for all we have done to displease you. Forgive our sins and help us to live in your light and walk in your ways. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into this world not to condemn us, 
but to save us from our sins. Because we have faith in this, we dare to believe that we are forgiven people. Hallelujah and amen. Join me in a prayer for illumination. Lord, your word is a light to our feet and a lamp to our path. Grant us faith and understanding that we may hear and know your will for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The first reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 14 and 22 through 20 through 32. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God, with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you, according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of your ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day, since he was a prophet. He knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Our second reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 1 verses three through nine. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice, rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the second Sunday of Easter. That's right, it's still the Easter season. 
on the church calendar, Easter runs for seven Sundays and ends with Pentecost, which is the day we are given the Holy Spirit. On this second Sunday of Easter, we hear a story about a surprise visit. The evening after the women found the empty tomb, all the disciples, well, all except Thomas, were in a building with the doors locked. Now that the guards had reported that Jesus' body was missing from the tomb, the disciples were afraid they were going to be in big trouble. Here they were, excited that the women had seen Jesus and terrified of the Jewish leaders and what they might do happy and scared all at the same time. The disciples were chatting quietly among themselves when Jesus stood in the middle of the room. What? No one had opened the door, but Jesus was there in the room. He said, peace be with you. Jesus showed the disciples the wounds on his hands and in his side. When they saw that this was really Jesus, they were wild with happiness. Their chatter was not quiet now, but bubbling over. Later, when Jesus was gone, Thomas returned. They all spoke at once, saying, we saw Jesus. Thomas wasn't so sure. He said, well, I won't believe you until I see the wounds on his hands and in the side myself. Eight days later, the disciples, Thomas too this time, were in the same room as before. And even though the doors were locked, Jesus stood in the middle of them. As before, Jesus said, peace be with you. He walked over to Thomas and said, see the wounds on my hands, touch the wound in my side. Now you can believe. Thomas gasped, my Lord and my God. Because Jesus couldn't stay dead, because Jesus had come alive again, the disciples knew somehow that everything would be all right. Okay, I'm putting on my best version of a detective hat and I've got some binoculars because I'm asking you all to be detectives this week. Thomas needed some proof of Jesus being alive and that is okay. This week, I want you to find proof too. I want you to find proof of signs of hope or signs of God in the world. They are everywhere if you take the time to look and a hint Sometimes you will find the proof with your eyes, and sometimes you'll find the proof by looking at your heart. Let's close in prayer. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Help us to remember that because you are always with us, everything will be all right. In your name we pray. Amen. Have wonderful days. God bless you all.
Listen to the word of the Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your fingers here and see my hands, reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet who have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On the Sunday after Easter, we almost always uh, make a nod to Thomas. Thomas was an average disciple. In the list of disciples, he usually falls somewhere in the middle, meaning he wasn't the most important and wasn't the least important. The Interpreter's Bible Dictionary says Thomas reveals a pessimistic outlook and an intense spirit of bravery. He is humble and candid enough to confess his ignorance, yet a man who is deeply devoted and capable of intense expressions of bravery. Fred Beekner just simply says Jesus, uh, uh, Thomas lacked imagination. The Jesus Seminar would have been loved by Thomas. That was a group that met in the 80s and the 90s, and they voted on all the sayings of Jesus that made Marcus Borg a publishing rock star. But it's important to know in this afterglow of Easter that our faith is not based on empirical evidence, not verifiable evidence or historical or archaeological or footnoted evidence. Our Christian faith is based on belief, on trust, on a hope. A hope that a man, Jesus of Nazareth, is the Son of God, that he lived, that he died, that he was raised on your behalf, that he sits at the right hand of God, and that he has given us the Holy Spirit. We believe this story because for some reason, the Holy Spirit within you has given you faith to believe the stories in the Bible, the stories you learned in Sunday school, the stories your grandmother told you, the stories you've heard from the pulpit over the years, and you trust the people and the story to be true. Our belief that the Easter story is all true uh, centuries later is really quite, it's really quite an amazing fact. Since we, unlike the original disciples, have not been allowed the um, opportunity to see Jesus, to talk to Jesus, to touch Jesus, to be in his presence physically. Therefore, belief, faith, our Christian hope has always been considered not to be a human work, but faith has always 
been considered a work of God, a, a work of the Holy Spirit of God. Faith will never be found by going back in time in a scholarly search for the historical Jesus, although that's an interesting and worthwhile pursuit. But our Christian faith hopes for what we cannot see. That's what the book of Hebrews says. Our faith hopes for what we cannot see, the conviction of things completely unseen. Thomas wanted empirical evidence as a fundamental condition of his faith. He wanted to see and touch and smell the risen Christ. Thomas missed the earlier post-resurrection appearances of Jesus, and so he said, unless I can touch and feel him, I simply will not believe. But a week later, after that happened, in the house where the other disciples were, Jesus appeared among them and said to Thomas, touch my hands, feel my side. Thomas, do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas said, my, my Lord and my God. What a great expression of faith. What a climax of the gospel. Thomas has been dubbed uh, doubting Thomas through the years as a sort of derogatory term, but no more. Today, Thomas would fit actually quite nicely in our uh, contemporary culture of disbelief, as Stephen Carter has called it. We live in an age of skepticism. We are told to uh, question everything and take nothing on blind faith. Looked at it this light, Thomas could be considered the hero of the Enlightenment, perhaps the star of the old series Dragnet, where the character wanted just the facts. Thomas perhaps represents everyone who shuns blind faith, who desperately desires a religion of, um, or a non-religion, based on facts, empiricism, and reason. But Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet who have come to believe. In other words, blessed are those who have blind faith because unless we see his hands and touch his side, there really is no other kind of faith. Now let's be clear, this does not mean that Christian faith is anti intellectual, or is not consistent with the facts that we know, or ignores scholarship, our faith must seek understanding, as some have said. The Bible encourages you to be as innocent as doves, but as wise as serpents. The Apostle Paul wrote, writes that the eyes of our hearts need to be enlightened. There is only one God, and the one God not only raised Jesus from the dead, but created the sun, the moon, the earth, the wind, and the stars, Long's Peak, the redwood forest, molecules, atoms, and you and me. I mean, all of creation points to the glory of God and the splendor of God and the glory of what God has created for us to enjoy. The more we know about God's created world through science, the more reasons we will have to sing of God's glory. Many of you think that of yourselves as well-educated, modern, progressive, skeptical, scientific, rational people like Thomas, and you're not completely convinced in your mind that all of the story is true. And this Sunday, the Sunday after Easter, I said that's to be expected. Yes, expected, because doubt will always be a component of the Christian faith. Doubt will always be present in the church, which is why Thomas was considered one of the twelve, because what we have here is a faith. And faith is the assurance of things that we hope for, the conviction of things that we have not seen with our eyes. We are not selling science in the church, 
although we are not anti-scientific. We're not peddling empiricism, nor do we need to fear the facts. We're not peddling, excuse me, we are peddling things like faith, hope, and love. We teach and preach about future things, ideal things, perfect things, heavenly things, things yet unseen. I often say that for too long the church asks simply, do you believe or not believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Yes or no. But the better question might be, are you willing to live? Are you willing to live as if you have hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Those who harbor a hope in the resurrection live differently and intentionally. Those who have hope in the resurrection are filled with courage. Those who have hope in the resurrection are oriented towards a life of self-sacrificial service, for we do not seek to hold up our treasures on earth, but place our treasures in heaven. People who have hope in the resurrection live in the present because the past is the past, and all is forgiven, and we trust God for our future. We work in this world to tear down the dividing walls of hostility, to bring peace and to feed the poor, and to care for the sick and to visit the prisoner, because we seek to help people experience a little slice of heaven here on earth. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our risen Lord. Amen. And now join me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead, I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
The first part of this prayer is a prayer for families that was emailed to the congregation this past Tuesday. Let's join our hearts and minds together now in prayer. God of families, big and small, near and far, old and new, be with us. When family members are difficult to love, remind us they are your beloved. When caring for loved ones over phone calls and text messages no longer feels like enough, give us your peace. When the faithful work of changing diapers or feeding the multitudes feels overwhelming, lift our burden. When the stress of job loss and income reduction makes us angry, remind us of your provision. When the hurt of the world overwhelms us, wipe away our tears. When we are fatigued educating our children over yet another screen, fill us with your comfort. When the walls we inhabit together start closing in, expand our understanding. When we feel lonely and alone, surround us with your presence. When we are weary of all that is required of us and afraid for the future, remind us you carry our burdens and our fears. Protect our God, watch over the essential workers, those who must leave the security of their home to help us. Guide leaders throughout the world as they ponder the gradual reopening of shattered economies and give them and us your heart for those whose lives have been shattered. Meet us in the places where our faith is fragile and move us from doubt to faith. Jesus, when all seems hopeless, remind us of your resurrection. We pray together in the way Jesus taught, saying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for online worship at Welsher Presbyterian Church. We are glad you're able to be with us from the safety of your home today. From your home, there are still many opportunities to get involved at Welsher. Our website, wpcdenver.org, details our offerings, including a new adult education offering we are starting today. We are going to explore the Psalms together. Additionally, you can find service opportunities on our website. You can find a family from Schmidt Elementary in need of food and supplies to adopt and deliver the much needed necessities at this time. The work of the church continues as much now as ever, and your financial contributions allow the important work of God to continue. Let us give thanks and praise to God through the act of offering.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we are grateful for all of the gifts that you have bestowed upon us. We return to you a portion of the gifts you have given us that we might do your work in this world that others might know the cross and raise it high in your glory. In your son's name we pray, amen. Go out into the world, have courage, hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak. And whatever you do, do in the love and in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide in your hearts this day and forevermore. Amen.